Welcome to the Defeating Epilepsy Foundation YouTube channel. In this presentation, we will learn what an EEG is, why an EEG is performed, different types of EEGs, the 1020 system, brain waves and activity, brain lobes and their functions, preparing to have an EEG, risk of having an EEG, what happens during the EEG, and what happens after an EEG. Make sure to like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell to be notified of future videos. We appreciate your support. An electroencephalogram, also known as an EEG, is a test that measures electrical activity in the brain. EEG testing is conducted by placing electrodes on the scalp, which detect electrical charges from brain activity. An EEG is used to detect abnormal brain activity as well as the cause of the abnormal brain activity. EEGs are performed for many reasons. When it comes to epilepsy, EEGs are used to detect abnormal brain activity to diagnose epilepsy. EEGs can also be used to diagnose brain tumors, brain damage from a head injury, brain dysfunction due to a variety of causes, inflammation of the brain, stroke, and sleep disorders. EEGs can also be used to detect brain activity. For someone who has been in a coma, an EEG can determine if there is any brain activity taking place or if brain death has occurred. There are several types of EEGs that can be performed. They are routine EEG. A routine EEG scan takes less than 23 minutes. An EEG technologist may ask you to breathe differently or look at flashing lights during the procedure. Prolonged EEG. A prolonged EEG test usually takes one hour and 15 minutes. Some can last for three to five days. A prolonged EEG gives a physician more information than a routine EEG. The benefit is the prolonged EEG may pick up something a routine EEG can easily miss. Physicians use prolonged EEGs to diagnose or manage seizure disorders. Prolonged EEGs use video. Ambulatory EEGs. Ambulatory EEGs last one to three days. Ambulatory EEGs take place at home or at an EEG monitoring unit. During an ambulatory EEG, electrodes connect to a small EEG recorder. You can do most of your daily activities while the EEG measures brain activity. You or a family member can press a button if you have a seizure. Video EEGs. The EEG technician makes a video recording of you during your EEG. Video recording helps your healthcare provider see and hear what you are doing when you have a seizure or other brain event. Video EEG is also known as EEG monitoring or EEG telemetry. Sleep EEG. A technician performs an EEG while you sleep. A physician may order a sleep EEG if a routine EEG does not provide enough information. The 1020 system is a special arrangement in which each electrode is put either 10 or 20% of the total distance between specific points on the head. Each is done by measuring the person's head and marking the position with a soft pencil. The electrode with even numbers go on the right side of the head and odd on the left side of the head. The electrodes have a letter on them as well for the area of the brain that is being recorded. F for frontal lobe, T temporal lobe, P parietal lobe, O occipital lobe, and Z for the midline of the head. For any students who are watching this, YouTube has several videos where they will explain the 1020 system in more detail and show you how the electrodes are placed. Brain waves are measured in hertz, which is in cycle per second. According to the article, changes in the brain's bioelectrical activity in cognition, consciousness, and some mental disorders, brain waves are categorized based on their frequency depending on the brain activity. 
Listed are the different brain rhythm waves and what causes them. Gamma waves. This wave is produced by different population of neurons together in a neural network of certain motor or cognitive function. Beta rhythm. This wave is related to consciousness, brain activities, and motor behaviors. This wave is recorded when the eyes are open. Alpha rhythm. This wave was among the first rhythmic waves documented. It originates from occipital lobes during wakeful relaxation, but has higher amplitude on the dominant side. Theta rhythm. This rhythm is recorded during low brain activities, sleep, or drowsiness. Delta rhythm. This wave is recorded during very low activities of the brain during deep sleep. The human brain consists of four lobes and the limbic system. Each plays an important role in how we function. Listed are the brain lobes and their functions. Frontal lobes, the largest of the four lobes, considered the emotional control center and is responsible for our personality. Motor function, problem solving, spontaneity, memory, language, initiation, judgment, impulse control, social and sexual behavior all come from the frontal lobe. Parietal lobes. The parietal lobes interpret and integrate sensory information. It controls tactile sensation, response to internal stimuli, sensory comprehension, reading, and visual functions. Occipital lobes are located in the back of the brain and enables humans to receive and process visual information. Our occipital lobes influence how humans process colors and shapes. Temporal lobes are involved in auditory processing, semantics in both speech and vision. The temporal lobe contains the hippocampus, which plays a role in the formation of long-term memory. The limbic system consists of the amygdala, cingulate gyrus, fornix, hippocampus, hypothalamus, olfactory cortex, and thalamus. There are a few simple steps to take before having an EEG. The night before testing, wash your hair and do not use any styling products or conditioners. Coffee, tea, energy drinks, and supplements with caffeine must be avoided at least 8 to 12 hours before testing. Any supplement that you use, notify your doctor. Certain supplements and medications can interfere with testing results, so make them aware of anything you are using. Any instructions provided by your physician, please follow. If you are having a sleep EEG, your doctor may request that you stay awake as much as you can throughout the night. Do not fast before having an EEG. Low blood sugar can have an effect on your results. Depending on the type of EEG someone is having, some can cause a low level of discomfort. There is a risk of having a seizure if flashing lights or anything that can trigger a seizure is part of the test. Example would be if a person is having a three to five day EEG in an epilepsy monitoring unit and the goal is to detect where seizure activity is coming from. In a monitored environment such as an epilepsy monitoring unit, they may discontinue the person's medication to trigger a seizure and detect where seizure activity is taking place in the brain. According to Cleveland Clinic, along with the risk of having a seizure, some people may feel dizzy. You may be asked to take deep breaths during the EEG, which can lead to dizziness for some. For the most part, EEGs are painless and cause no discomfort. The experience for each patient differs depending on what type of EEG is being conducted. In preparing for an EEG, the technician will measure and mark the person's head, as explained on the 1020 system slide. The electrodes are placed on the scalp using a special adhesive to help the disc stay in place. Depending on what type of EEG the person is having, they may be lying down or sitting in a chair. The technician may ask the person to open and close their eyes, do basic math, breathe deeply, or may use a strobe light to see if there is any reaction. If having a video EEG, the person may be in the epilepsy monitoring unit or a neurologist's office 
may provide a small video camera for the person to have with them while the EEG is being recorded. After the test, the electrodes will be removed from the head. The technician will do what they can to remove the paste for the person's head. In many situations, it is best to wash your hair again when you go home. If you took any sedatives for the test, make sure you have someone who can give you a ride home. Your scalp may be irritated from the electrodes, especially if your EEG was for days. The irritation will wear off within a few hours. If your physician requested you stop taking any medications or supplements before the test, they will inform you when you can resume taking them. Any specific instructions that your doctor gives you to follow, please follow them. An electroencephalogram, also known as an EEG, is a test that measures electrical activity in the brain. EEGs can be performed for diagnosis and measuring brain activity. There are several types of EEGs. The 1020 system is used for proper placement of the electrodes. Different brain waves measure different activity. The brain consists of four different lobes and the limbic system. Each lobe and the limbic system plays an important part in our brain function. Follow the instructions given to prepare for your EEG. Do not hesitate to ask questions to prepare for the test. Depending on the EEG you have will determine the level of comfort or time it will take. After your test is finished, follow all instructions given to you by the technician or the physician. To learn more about EEGs, please check out the resources used in our presentation today. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media pages. We would love to hear from you. Leave a comment below or email us at info at defeatingepilepsy.org. Thank you for your support and together we will defeat epilepsy. Check out our other great videos on our channel and subscribe today. You have the power to defeat epilepsy.